Hey folks, welcome to this episode of Legend of the Outdoor TV. I'm actually getting to hunt with one of my longtime heroes, a guy that I admire highly, Mr. Denny Breyer. Denny, welcome to the show. I appreciate that, Gary. Folks, stick around. We're going to talk with Denny and with Mike Cunningham of Kohler Blinds. I know you're going to want to see this episode of Legends of the Outdoor TV. 5 a.m. can't come soon enough for folks like these. There's more than just a job to do so they hit their knees. They sure take pride in everything they do. There's no challenge that they won't work through So they tirelessly keep going on They work their fingers to the bone they Spend way too much time to build and away from home You can be sure they know what all this hard work is for So now we honor you Legends, legends of the outdoors. Hey folks, we're here on a duck and goose hunt in Nebraska, one of the prettiest places I've ever been. We're with our host Mike Cunningham of Kohler Blinds, and we're actually sitting in a blind that Mike built. And our special guest today is Denny Breyer. Most of y'all know Denny as a great fisherman, but what you don't know about Denny is he's just as good a hunter as he is a fisherman. Denny, great to have you on the show today. I appreciate that, Mike, Gary. thanks for having us, man. My pleasure, welcome. We're gonna have a great time here in Nebraska. One of the prettiest places. This is one of the most well-kept secrets in the Three waterfowl ducks. hunting world. Okay, time out. These guys don't ever quit working. <laughs> Here's a lone duck coming right here. Jeff, Jeff, right in front of you, Jeff. Right in front of you, Jeff. Right in the back of the decoys. Killer. Still not dead. He ain't dead yet. Uh-oh, he's about to be. Yeah. Jeff is still a point now. <laughs> I tell, I'm telling you. done now? Yeah, you got to aim about 12 inches to the left. I'm telling you, the boy's a killer. Oh, oh my God, you still can't hit it. <laughs> Shot right over the top of it. There's three geese right here. Three geese right here. See, that was sweet, wasn't it, Dennis? That was sweet. Them three big old Canada's come right in here. That couldn't have been any prettier. <laughs> it take you long to get rid of them. all three of them down. Man, Denny, I'll tell you, your hometown of Surrey, Nebraska, uh, big old giant migratory Canada geese, it don't get no better than that. Uh, it's it? certainly never been known for that. Kind of a well-kept secret. Boy, it is. I'll, this is my eighth year coming up here and hunting with Mike Cunningham, and I'm gonna tell you, I'll come back every year as long as I'm invited. Great birds. That's gonna be some good eating, too, you yep. know? What? Yep. We all got a Christmas goose. Nothing wrong with that. We may cook it for Thanksgiving. <laughs> he may not make it till Christmas. That one was going down and he was about half crippled and I heard Denny's gun go off and I seen feathers go poof. All right, man, let's get in the blind and see if we can't get some more. There'll be more coming. Man, Denny, them three big old giant Canada's come right in here, didn't they? It, it could not have been any prettier than that. I mean, they just kind of hung there in that wind. And, yeah. And you, you almost <laughs> wish that it wasn't quite that easy at times, but man, it was like shooting at a still target right yeah, there. Yeah, they got right in that wind right in front of the blind, and you know, Mike didn't hit a call or anything. They just decoyed right in here. That was fabulous. That was a waterfowler's dream right Boy, there. Well, you ain't joking, and you know, we've seen it happen time and time again here hunting with Mike over the years. Those geese just love this little old pond, and they come to it as they're migrating south. 
giant birds. I, mean, oh, I can't yeah. believe how big they were. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, we're going to break for a commercial, and we'll be right back, folks, after these messages. This portion of Legends of the Outdoors is brought to you by Woodhaven Custom Calls, America's best turkey and deer calls. Game hide. One brand, every season. St. James, Missouri Chamber of Commerce, here to promote our local economy. Said a while ago, we're here in Surrey, Nebraska, and getting to hunt with actually one of my heroes, Denny Breyer. Man, you've been on the bass fishing circuit for many, many years, but Surrey, Nebraska is your hometown. Hey, it really is. I was born and raised right here, and we lived here till I guess I was 31 and decided to go full time bass fishing. And then we moved to Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri, which is only like a six hour drive from here. So I've got a lot of relatives. My mother was still here then, and we drive back and forth quite a bit. But since then, we've moved to Texas, and it's a lot further away, about a thousand miles. <laughs> so I don't get up here too often anymore. Well, now you've got uh, Chad, your son, is in Missouri. Correct. You've got uh, uh, grandkids. grandkids there yeah. and stuff. But, but I want you to tell, tell the audience a little bit about how you got started with your bass fishing career out of Stewart, Nebraska, because, you know, there's not really any lakes here, any big lakes. I mean, there's a lot of small ponds and farm ponds, and, and in Texas, they might call them tanks, but a lot of that type of stuff. And some of them do have bass. This one that we're hunting on right here has got bass on it. So how did you go from Stewart, Nebraska to a nationally known uh, bass tournament angler? Well, I was fortunate. We lived on the edge of Seward where there was a little stream called Plum Creek that come through there and it had fish in it. So a neighborhood thing for us to do back then. We'd go down and fish for whatever it bite. And then as I got a little bit older, we started riding our bicycles out to some of the farm ponds. We had permission to fish on that were loaded with bass. So that kind of got the bass fishing appetite going. and. And as I got older and was actually out in the workforce, uh, I had a friend I worked with that had a Bassmaster magazine and got to reading it one day during lunch and started hearing about these tournaments and all that stuff. And so I come back to Seward and uh, started my own bass club, so to speak, the Blue Valley Bass Club, and got some other guys that were bass fishing enthusiasts. and. Uh, we started to fish uh, the state tournaments and uh, won a couple of the state federation tournaments, got to go to the nationals and decided I would like to try to fish a professional tournament and uh, so they finally had one at Lake of the Ozarks and I figured that was as close as they were going to get to Nebraska and I went down and fished it and had some success and uh, next thing I knew I was doing it full time. But when I was growing up there's a chain of lakes here in Nebraska called the Salt Valley Chain of Lakes. And none of them are big. I think 2,500 acres. Would that be right, Mike? Would be about the biggest one at Branch Oak. I think it's closer to about 700 acres. But yeah, <laughs> it's not near what it used to be either with the silt and that. But the fishing was excellent, Gary, on those lakes. So it was a good training ground for me. The only bad thing is the winters up here get cold and it gets hard with the ice and you can't fish. So that was part of the reason I made the move south to where I could fish year round. I also remember you being on the front cover of a Wheaties box. Tell us a little bit about that, how that happened, because you're the only angler that's ever been, to my knowledge, that's been on the front cover of Wheaties. One of the major tours, the FLW tour at that time, had uh, General Mills for a sponsor. And uh, at the beginning of the year, they announced that whoever won Angler of the Year would have an opportunity to be on the Wheaties box. And uh, over the years, I knew how much weight that carried and the different people that had been on that box and it kind of lit a fire under me and it come down to the last event which was on the Connecticut River. I just happened to have a real good tournament and ended up winning the angle of the year and and then the big photo shoot started. I had no idea how big a production it was to be on a Wheaties box but I found out over the years how far reaching that is. I still have people come up to me with a Wheaties box that, you know, that's been over 20 years ago. Yeah, I want you and, to autograph it and everything. And I've always wondered what the Wheaties looked like <laughs> inside. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, it was a far reaching deal and it's something that really helped enhance a career. And you were fishing against some of the great anglers like Larry Nixon and, and uh, George Cochran, Hank Parker, uh, Roland Martin, all of them. I mean, you guys were uh, fierce competitors, but you were all great friends. And that's what the camaraderie of this sport is something that I've always really loved. 
Yeah, I think that's the reason I did it for so many years. Uh, being out on the road traveling can get old, as you well know, but when you're traveling with a group of friends like that and the fun we'd have at those tournaments, the practical joking that went on, and you know, that all ended when we got on the water. We were hardcore competitors. Everybody wanted to win, but when you got off the water, we had a really good time, and even on the water, if somebody broke down or whatever, you weren't gonna drive by him. You were gonna stop and give him a ride in, and that was the attitude that we were all in it to make a, you know, a business out of it, and, and all those guys you just mentioned were very, very successful at it. Uh, absolutely. Well, folks, we'll be right back after these messages with more duck hunting and shirt and Denny Breyer. This portion of Legends of the Outdoors is brought to you by Knox County Whitetails, where you come as a client and leave as a friend. CVA, it's just a better gun. RBX Transportation, be a name, not a number. We're making a little, what I call, rabbit stew. The stew will carry the Tennessee guarantee. If you like it, tell everybody. If you don't like it, just don't tell nobody. Yep, that's a cat. Now then, in about 30 minutes, that ought to be smelling like your grandmother's kitchen the minute you walk in it. Is that not pretty? In about an hour from now, that is gonna be so good that if you set a bowl of it on top of your head, your tongue may beat your brains out trying to get to it. Oh, mm. Terrible, it's gonna be terrible. Mm. Well, I'm gonna put you on the spot here because I know you've got some really great friends. It's also great friends of mine. What, tell me something about Hank Parker that I can use for later on. Oh my, Hank Parker, he's a crazy man. We drew out in a couple of tournaments back when it was still pro on pro and I could tell you some stories there, but I remember we had a classic one time and you probably have heard this story before. It was on the Ohio River and we were out of Louisville, Kentucky and you could run upstream from Louisville and the Kentucky River f flowed in to the main river we were fishing. And uh, you went about a mile or two, the best I remember, up the Kentucky River and there was a lock. So I get to that lock the first day of the tournament. And we all had identical boats. Ranger furnished the boats then, so it yeah. wasn't like anybody had a more powerful, faster boat or anything. And, who pulls in beside me? Hank Parker. <laughs> and we're the only two guys in this little bitty lock. And as it got closer to opening, we kept edging up there. And before I knew it, Hank and I were just kind of banging boats. And it got wide enough to where we could get our boats out and away we went. And this river really wasn't that wide and it turned into a boat race. And I wasn't gonna give and Hank wasn't gonna give and I had Sammy Lee, outdoor rider, I, was I my Sammy, observer. I know Sammy very well. And Hank would get a little edge going around one bend, and Sammy would get a little wet <laughs> going around the next bend. Anyhow, it went that way for 15 miles till we got to that next lock. And I shut down, and Sammy goes, we going through that lock? I go, no, we passed my fishing spot about five miles back, but I wasn't going to lose the race. I beat Hank. So we got to turn around and go back to where we're going to fish. But, uh, but there were a lot of Hank Parker stories, but good dude. Oh, yeah, Hank is great. And, uh, he's been certainly great for our industry. You know, he's got that big old grin. Yeah. You know? And, uh, well, I really appreciate you being on the show with us, Denny. Coming home, uh, this has been special for me as well to get to meet you up here in Stewart, Nebraska, where I hunt, you know, with Mike Cunningham and uh, have for years. And, and uh, hey, let's make this an annual thing. I would, I would love to. Great people, great memories. That's what it's all about. We'll see if Michael let us come back next year. And he might not. He might not. But if he don't, we, we can beg and cry until he just gets tired of hearing us whine, you know, and he'll cave in. He usually does. So I usually start he, on him about midsummer when I started on him. He, he normally caves about September. He says, yeah, you can come on. You know the deal, I'd take you guys anytime. <laughs> Great deal.
Hey, Denny, we're here on the corner of 5th and Surt Street, right here in Surt, Nebraska, your hometown where you were born and raised. Man, it's got to feel great to come be back home. It, it really does. Uh, we've got a pretty windy day today, but other than that, one of the warmest days for this time of the year you could ask for, so it's not all bad. And behind us, we've got the county's courthouse, uh, which just brings back a lot of good memories. Uh, got a Concordia College here. You got a great park with a swimming pool. Just a lot of different places that over the years, I was born and raised here. So uh, there's uh, nothing about this town that I didn't know at one time. Now, right now, I don't know. Well, you talked about some of the other highlights in town, Concordia College. College yeah. And uh, then I think you've got the National Guard Museum. You got the National Guard Museum. Uh, that's a big deal. It's only about two blocks from where we're at right now. No, I wouldn't call it a small town, but it's not a large town, but it's really got everything you need. So it, it's, per, and it's a growing town, a lot of people. This portion of Legends of the Outdoors is brought to you by Black Widow Innovations. Tough, accurate, deadly. Scott Archery, CBE, Ultra Arrows. Now I'm gonna tell you, I might be, I might embarrass him a little bit, but if Denny Breyer was from my hometown, there'd be a sign at every entrance coming in. Because this man, this man, you know, you're not a king in your own castle. But I'm gonna tell you, this man is known not only all over the United States, he's known all over the world. He's one of the best anglers that America has ever produced. Ladies and gentlemen, give me a big round of applause for your hometown boy, Denny Breyer. Thank you, Gary, I guess. Yeah. I got a phone call. Uh, you want to go duck and goose hunting? And I go, yeah. I get up here and he goes, guess what? We're going to have a little deal for you. And I go, oh, gee, thanks, Gary. I just, <laughs> but the more I got to thinking about it, it'll be a good opportunity to, to see a bunch of you guys and, that I haven't seen in years. So that's just pretty cool. But I get to travel a lot to go hunting. And I certainly thank Gary for the opportunity to come up here. This has been a great experience. I appreciate all you people coming out. So hopefully we got time to visit tonight and maybe it won't be that long before I get back up here. If we kill a bunch of geese tomorrow, I know I'll be here next year. So I don't want to put any pressure on you, but I hope you move those decoys just perfect tomorrow. So. When Carol got to realizing who you guys were and she let the Nebraska Game of Parks Commission know that you were coming and they recognized you all and we're glad you were here. So, uh, thank you. Yeah. The game warden certainly would. <laughs> We we'll try to stay away from those guys as much as we can. How many From day one, when I was tournament fishing, I wanted to be the first boat in the water on a practice day and the last boat out. And I wanted, I maybe not going to be smarter than they were, but I wasn't going to be outworked. And that time on the water, I think, gave me an edge a lot of the times, and I just never ever gave up. But as far as singling out big fish, you go out to Branch Oak, Pawnee, any of these lakes, try to find the heaviest cover you can find on that lake, and that's probably where the fish are gonna be. And that's what I try to do fish and get to those less pressured areas because that's probably where the biggest bass are gonna be. And if it, all the areas are getting pressured, then you gotta try to outsmart the other anglers by using baits, fish a little slower, a little faster, try to do something different. So there's really no secrets in fishing anymore. It's just kind of a common sense deal. We got a little boy back there that's got a question. What's your biggest fish you caught? Oh boy, I was hoping nobody would ask that. <laughs> I was practicing for a tournament on Lake Amstead and uh, we just come back from Lake Falcon filming a couple of shows. After we got done filming, we come back up to Lake Amistad at Del Rio, and I had a tournament that was going to be like a week later. So I get out on the lake to practice. So I did, I was fishing a football jig, and it gets about three-fourths of the way down, and the line jumps, and I fight him around for a while, and I finally land this fish. I just lost it. I started shaking. I put the fish in the live well, I sat down and took a couple Advil. I immediately had a headache and I thought, I need to let that fish go, but I need to weigh it first. So I get my scale out, I put it on the scale 
and it only went to 15 pounds and I still put him on there and it bottomed that out. So now I know the fish definitely is over 15 pounds. I don't know whether it's 16 or not. And I thought, you know, we got a tournament in less than a week. If I take that fish back to that little hump where he is living, I maybe make a hundred grand off him and that fish, <laughs> that fish is going to be real famous. So like an idiot, I take him back there, let her go, and she swims right back down. And the last time I ever saw her, never made any money in that tournament because I spent too much time trying to catch that fish. What it weighed, I'm probably the only person that doesn't know what their biggest fish weighed, but I do know it weighed over 15. So. I gotta tell you, we hope you welcome us back because we're already booked at Miss Pat's for next year, and we've already told Mike to put it down in the book. We love you guys, we love this town, we love the people in it, and we certainly love the outdoors opportunity. So thank you so very much, and y'all enjoy the rest of the evening with Denny and his wife. Hey folks, hope you've enjoyed this show with master bass angler Denny Breyer, and until the next episode, God bless and good hunting. So now we honor you as legends, legends of the outdoors.